Welcome to the After Church Tea Time. My name is Christine and I will be your host today. We had a small technical issue in the beginning, but we're here now. So welcome. Today I'm joined by Diona and Granville. Thank you very much for joining me. Thank you. And I have to say today's sermon was a very juicy topic. When I first saw the topic, I just jumped with joy because it's been one of the things I've been working on, life purpose and how to give more and how to be of service. And I feel all of humanity is awakening to this lately because we've all heard about people since COVID, they, like some people would say they don't want to work anymore, but it's not that. It's people are realizing what's important to them, what their values are. And just having a job to live paycheck to paycheck doesn't really cover that need anymore. So I feel like globally we're awakening to what is my life purpose? How can I live it? And how can I not just survive making a simple income, but also thrive? And also at the same time, enjoy what I love most doing in life. Yeah, I have to agree with you. I, th I think uh, COVID has made us all pay more attention to everything that's happening with us and in our lives and around us. And I, I feel like that's probably what we're picking up more is just that people are saying, what is the purpose of this stuff? What is the reason why I'm doing this? And I think, you know, for me, it's also, it's also been a thing, you know, like just taking a step back and using the last two years to really understand what's actually happening in my life. And if it still serves a purpose, regardless of whether it is in a work-related capacity or a personal capacity, I just feel like it's, it's really given me time to just pay attention. And so, yeah, I did, it has been a shift of like, what is it that I really want to do that I really enjoy that's going to bring me the fulfillment that I think is how I'm designed to live. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, definitely the same for me. Um, I've been really working on like getting clear about what it is that, uh, like the both of you said, what it is that I actually love to do. And like, if money or shelter and thing or basic needs weren't an issue, what would I want actually want to do? Um, and so what I'm learning is that it's okay to kind of surrender uh, to whatever feels good and recognize that that good feeling can change, right? Like um, I've been working a lot with my coaches on this as well, like feeling like I have to commit to something or, or when I commit to something, it means that I'm gonna, you know, stay in it long term and there's no room for change. Um, but what I'm learning is that commitment means actually committing to God, right? Like committing to that good feeling. And that can absolutely change. Like the good feeling uh, can change on the outside, but as long as you commit to what feels good and what feels peaceful and loving and connected to God on the inside, um, you know, that's true commitment. And that's when you know you're kind of moving in your life purpose, no matter what it looks like on the outside. Um, so those are a couple of things I've been learning. Um, and I think that uh, it was really touched on really well uh, in this sermon. I love that you brought this up because uh, Jose said something about it, how before he came into Harmonious Union, he had this idea in his head that, hey, this is how I'm going to live my life. I'm going to do this for my job. Like we have all these plans, but at the end of the day, we don't fully know ourselves. God is constantly revealing us because we're infinite beings we can't know everything just one day so we might discover that hey I like this thing a little bit more so I'd like to do that and it doesn't mean you're not committed if you change your path even later in life it just means that you're committing to God and where God is taking you and it does take a lot of surrender because even in my case I went to university for something and I'm doing something completely different with my life and I wouldn't have it any other way. I feel much more in purpose here. And as Michaela said, it feels way better when you earn money living your purpose compared to just working a job that you don't really like as much. 
I, I think, and, and I like what you guys have shared because I, I feel like one of the things that kind of stood out for me was the sharing of the gift and honoring the gift that you receive. I feel like, when, you know, for me, it's been, a, it's been a journey. Like I was in HR for 19 years and then I moved into partial coaching and HR in COU. And like, I was like, well, God, like, what is this? <laughs> you know, like, what's happening here? Like, 19 years of HR shifted to coaching. And then I realized, well, actually, there was no real difference there because the coaching happened inside of HR anyway. And like, just recently, probably in the last few months, I was like, okay, God, take me where you want to go. Where you Take me where you want me to go. And I actually manifested a job in HR again you know, <laughs> and I was like, okay, let's do that, and it's, you know, like, it's different, like, it was, it doesn't feel the same as it did before COVID in terms of HR being this heavy energy, it's kind of like, I almost make my own time, so I don't have to be in the office all the time, I interact with people very easily, you know, like the, the two years of being home, because I actually resigned from my job prior to COVID. So like two years of being home and, you know, like learning to work remotely was a thing. Like I, I always told myself that I couldn't work from home because I wasn't disciplined. And then for two years, I did work remotely. <laughs> and had to become disciplined like it's all just come back together in a neat little package that I don't have to have somebody moaning and groaning because they want stuff it's like that was a new skill to add to the toolkit that was like actually but you have the capability you've been telling yourself a story and kind of believing it but that's really not the truth the truth is you're, you've been doing this role and now you're doing this role under very different circumstances and you're doing it and you go into the office two, week, two days a week or three days a week, sometimes four days a week if the requirement is there, but you can also very comfortably be disciplined and sit at home and do this job and connect with people remotely and have these conversations via Zoom or Teams all the time and it's like, like everything just came full circle because it was HR in an office all the time. And then I joined the live conversations and managed those via Zoom. And then I had, did the admin from home and worked remotely. And all of that has just come full circle to create a newer component. And it's like Michaela and Jose said, like sometimes you don't, you like you look at something and you're like, what is this? You're like, this wasn't part of the design I had in mind. But all of these things stacked up in a way that makes it work even better than it did before. I've noticed this too with a lot of people, their previous background in jobs or perhaps school, anything they've done before, it really helps and supports their life purpose later in life. And at the end of the day, it's about the gift that you as an individual get, even if the activity changes. You could be a barista one day and an engineer the next day, but it will still be your gift that you do in a particular way that nobody else on earth can do, which is amazing because it shows how beautiful God's creation is that each and every one of us is so unique that we could all, for example, make the same cup of coffee, but each of us would have something unique to give in this act of service. Yeah, exactly. And it's like all the puzzle pieces kind of come together. Like you get one puzzle piece from being a barista, then you get the other uh, from a completely different role, but it all comes together to help you share that core gift, right? No matter what it looks like on the outside. Um, so I think that's really cool. Um, and then like, I have a similar story in, in terms of like, I've, uh, my educational background is in accounting. 
Um, and at one point I thought I didn't really want to do accounting anymore. Like I'd rather be an Ascension coach and I'd rather uh, pursue spirituality. And then I end up uh, helping on the finance team in the Church of Union. So it, it kind of all uh, came together and it kind of took me right back to where I started in like, uh, really owning this gift that I have or, or like uh, claiming it and, and just allowing God to show me, you know, how to share it, where to share it, um, and not really controlling what that, that looks like. Um, because I do have, you know, like, a, like all of us or, or most of us, right? Like um, we want to just love and we, we do, um, we love coaching and interacting with God and our brothers and sisters in that way. And like each of you have said, that looks different for each of us. And kind of for me, realizing that my gift in this area um, of accounting, uh, just randomly, right, it can help me in all areas of my life, even in spirituality, even in building relationships, like I don't have to let it go to pursue God. God is actually bringing that gift with me um, in all of my relationships. So I think that's it's really, really awesome. Yeah, I, I like that you like you. I like you should, that you share that. It like it, like sometimes it actually does feel like a puzzle. It like literally feels like there are so many components. And then you look at all of these components, you're like, how do these things fit together? <laughs> and I had, like, I had that moment. I had that moment, like, what is this? Like, if you told me a few years ago, I would be sitting and sharing my journey in live discussions, I'd have probably told you you're smoking something because that's, that's not, that was never my natural inclination. I'd very much comfortably one-on-one -on -one share certain things and keep other things to myself. And just this three-year journey of kind of going through the process of after church tea times and live discussions for our social impact team has shifted my perspective. So I'm now comfortable to run meetings through a platform, through an online platform, where before I would have probably expected people to be around in the office all the time so we can meet, because that would have been my way of connecting with them. <laughs> and this kind of shifted it. And it like it did. It felt like puzzle pieces. Like when when the when the go live team was presented, I was like, sorry, what? <laughs> you know? <laughs> and it did it felt like it felt like something so out of character but it's not it's like you see like both of you have said it, it it comes together in a way that you just know that was the design for you and it doesn't come it's as and as Michaela and Jose shared like it's it's never like somebody else's journey like we just we we see we might see certain similarities, but it's never like somebody else's journey. And it's what you shared, Christine. It's like that in it, like that like really being surrendered in that place. Like God says, okay, take this piece for now. And so you go with this piece for now, and God says, okay, right, we've tried it. It doesn't work. And it also allows. The, like it allows me to release as well because I, I would have been that person that would just carry on very hunky dory all on the same page cracking on in one direction and then God was like okay go here for a little bit go there for a little bit go there for a little bit go there for a little bit I was like what is going on like really what is this it's literally what Jose said about like you look you see it and you're like it makes no sense but in the end, it makes perfect sense. You kind of just need to be open to it. I've experienced that too with my volunteering in the Church of Union, like changing positions all the time and trying out new things and serving in different ways. And of course, not everything is for everyone, but I still have some skills from its position that I can apply to what I'm currently doing. 
whether it's in my life purpose, whether it's in, I don't know, just chilling at home, I can do certain things more effectively. My organization skills have got way better. So even with tiny things, God can find a way to teach you. Even going to the supermarket can be an educational experience if you let God lead you. Yeah, and it does. Like, I, I think one of the, the big things that stands out for me is I like, I, I just had to say to God, like, okay, this, this is not quite working. Take me where you want me to be. And then I man, then then I manifested a, a, a role in a corporate, and I was like, okay, well, there we go, you know, like that's where I'm meant to be. And I can't even tell you if that's gonna last for a year or not. I just know that that's where I'm now. That's where I'm at now, and that's what I'm being called to love right now. Yeah, and another thing that I like that um, Jose and Michaela mentioned was the bit about like making money through uh, sharing your gift and how, um, you know, in the beginning, it may feel like this gift you have to share uh, isn't the most profitable or it's you find it hard to make money and you find yourself having to moonlight or, you know, keep two different jobs or keep your day job and, and do what you're passionate about on the side. But what I really like that they shared is that as long as you are following that feeling um, and loving it fully, God will pay you. God will find ways to get you the money that you need, get you the shelter. You know, God will take care of you um, as long as you're following your good. Right. And so I've seen that happen a lot in my life, like money just out of nowhere, just kind of pops up and I'll, I'll talk to my coaches about it. And I'm like this, I'm kind of uh, skeptical, skeptical about this. Like I'm suspicious. Like, why is all of this happening the way it is? And, and they'll kind of like gently remind me, like, as long as you're moving in your life purpose and you're, you're following uh, God, as he calls, this is how God loves you, right? Like your source of income doesn't just have to come from one place, right? And um, God is not limited. God is unlimited. And so, um, yeah, I think, you know, especially for me, as I had fear around pursuing my life purpose, the money piece was a, a big part of that. But um, as I kind of let go of that, I realized that you know, money is love, right? It's just energy and it can come from any source. It's a very important piece. So thank you for sharing because I feel a lot of people are really thinking about the money piece when it comes to pursuing their life purpose. And that's what makes it very difficult for them to just take the leap because it's very complicated then. Like, okay, how do I find the money and how do I find enough income to do that? So yeah, that's very valuable. And of course, um, I have a lot of earth sign placements, so I'm very grounded in that. So of course, I would never be like, okay, yeah, quit your job tomorrow and <laughs> whatever. But yeah, as long as you feel guided to it, then that's okay, because God will find a way to support you, even if it doesn't make sense looking at it from the outside. Because as Michaela shared, a lot of times it might not make sense why you're doing what you're doing because you're just doing it out of love in the beginning. But then God finds a way to increase your abundance as you keep following and healing and it looks you have to it. And that's really beautiful. Yeah, and something that, you know, that's, that really stands out for me is like, I've always had this thing about admin. And it was the funniest thing because I'd be like, I, I would always say to Brienne, like she's my coach and I'm like, I can't be dealing with this admin thing. And then the, this was the role that I was in that I just recently started. I was like, well, technically you're doing all of these things, <laughs> you know? I was like, okay, I've got to, I've got to kind of work through the process of loving the admin so I can release it. And literally it lasted for like three months and it was like, okay, 
we are employing an admin assistant for you. Like, okay, so you've got, you you now can employ an admin assistant. That's like a fabulous. <laughs> but you know, it, it's, it's that thing about the challenges are the lesson. And I think that's what they shared as well. It's like, you, you know, you don't realize the big blessing that comes through the challenge but you have to be open to exploring it. You have to be open to looking at that challenge and working through it so that you find the next piece. And now it's so cool because I've had the time to work through the admin component. And so I'm able to now employ somebody that I like be very specific about what I want them to do from an admin point of view, because I know it. I also know where things could go wrong so I can teach them to do it differently. So all of that stacked up. And it was like, at the beginning, I was like, really? Admin, why? And it just, it just so happened that it worked out very well in my favor. And I think that's something that Michaela and Jose shared as well, is that it does work out in your favor. But you have to be open to the lesson. You have to be open to learning the lesson. And it's also nice that once you learn the lesson, you can very comfortably share the lesson so that somebody else may learn it differently and at a less intense, painful space or pace. And so, yeah, I, you know, I think it's just like it always, it like always strikes me very interestingly how the design of it all fits together, even when we don't understand the design. It's like literally geared specifically to each one of us. Absolutely. And I, I really like what you said about like going all in, like that's been my lesson forever, it feels like. It's just, you have to really go all in and love something completely before you can transcend it, right? Like um, I've really been working on like letting go of avoidance um, and probably like hiding. And it's like, if you keep doing that, you're just gonna be stuck in the same pattern like you have to go all in you have to uh, be completely honest you have to love whatever position you're in fully right do it to the best of your ability give your all to it and only then can God show you the next step um, and so that's what I've been learning if I try to control it and quit or leave before God says it's time then I'm just going to end up right back in that same space um, so, yeah, I think that's a, a really good uh, point to bring up there. Yeah, that's a great point. And it reminds me of uh, when Shalia shared about her false twin flame experience in the book, about how you need to love a person to leave them fully. And the same is true for your life purpose. You need to love a certain area of it in order to fully transcend it, if you're meant to transcend it. Otherwise, you'll keep repeating the lesson time and time again because you haven't learned it fully. So, <laughs> and you need to learn it to level up. And you know, something, something that's kind of stood out for me over the last few years, especially with COU, is kind of just also knowing when it's time to let go of something. Like, you know, there's been components that I've taken on and there came a point where God was saying, okay, think about it, review it, review it, review it. And sometimes I wouldn't. And it would just come back around, review it, review it, review it. Is that still your space? Is that still where you're meant to be? And some things, like some things, I'm very good at establishing something, but somebody else needs to run with it. And then other things, I'm very good at running with what somebody else has established. And it's kind of balancing these two things out and knowing when to let go because you've done your part. 
And it's and I think it's some it's something that you spoke to in terms of the lessons, Diana. It's like that has been my lesson: learning when to actually let go. And it's not about giving up. It's about you've seen it through to the point where you need it. And so somebody else has the next piece, but they can't bring in the next piece if you're clutching to that space. So it has been a lesson for me to learn in my journey. It's like, yes, you had a part. You had a responsibility in a certain space. It's time to hand it over. And I know, I, and I know, like God does this thing with me where it becomes super uncomfortable if I cling to something for too long. It's not even, it's not even heavy. It just becomes super uncomfortable. And then I know, okay, we need to rethink this. And it's often I'll have this conversation with God. I'm like, okay, so what now? And then somebody in COU will reach out and say, okay, well, how are you feeling about that part? <laughs> so then I know, okay, like, like there is proper alignment here. So God's saying, okay, we are now in alignment. If it's time, it's time. So even if I, I'm having a thought in that space, there's alignment in another space. And, and like generally, it will be somebody like Brienne or Chrissy reaching out and going, how do you really feel about this any longer? So yeah, it's kind of, it's something that I've learned to work with and something that I've learned to work through. Like when God says, let go, you let go. There's no point in hanging on you are actually then creating a block for the flow of energy in that space. I feel like equating, um, society is equating, letting go with giving up has a lot to do with um, ego's tendency to cling to suffering. Because a lot of times we've heard like, oh, you're not supposed to divorce that person you've been with because you need to stay together for the kids. Even though that person is not your twin flame, it's not working out and everybody's miserable. Or you need to stay in that job that you're miserable in. But God doesn't want that. God doesn't want you to suffer. So the ego has painted it as giving up or not being committed so that you can keep staying in suffering in a way. But God, on the other hand, doesn't see it this way. God wants you to be happy. So that's why letting go is so emphasized here. And being present also, because when you're present, you can tell that something is no longer for you. So you can just easily let it go and everything will be fine. Yeah, that's huge, like the letting go piece. And it can really be a huge lesson. Like, um, I think this was touched on in, in the uh, live class, but like sometimes when we kind of hold on to things, like like you were talking about Granville, um, you're you're controlling it and you're not allowing God to move in that space. And that can be a pattern of like uh, taking on too many tasks, right? And because that's your relationship with life purpose or that's your relationship with work in terms of like burnout and overworking and, and doing too much. And the lesson is actually to let go of some things um, so that you can feel your feelings around it. Uh, and I remember Jeff was saying like overworking or, or holding on to, to different tasks and stuff like that can also be just a way to, to numb out, right? Um, and so that, that letting go piece is crucial um, to allow God to flow and to allow yourself to really feel your feelings around it. Um, I, I think that's been a big lesson for me as well in terms of life purpose is just letting go of my pattern, my relationship with burnout and overworking um, and, you know, just allowing myself to feel my feelings around that um, and allowing myself to rest where needed and, and kind of getting clear on um, what that looks like and what that feels like when I partner with God. So. Yeah, and, and Brianne also made a post about this. You know, rest doesn't actually mean, 
it, it doesn't have to mean sitting and doing nothing or, or um, like you can actually be really active in rest when you when you partner with God. Um, it's really just about following that that loving feeling. Um, and uh, yeah, choosing to do it with God. So yeah, a lot of a lot of insights there. I feel this again comes back to presence because yeah, sometimes you might need to sleep more than compared to other times, especially if you've just healed something very big and you're integrating. And then there's some other times when you're so active and you feel full of energy and everything is flowing. So yeah, it's about listening to the divine, listening to your body and knowing, okay, when am I running low on energy and why am I running low on energy? Is it because maybe it's two hours past my bedtime or is there something else going on? Maybe I'm not letting go of something I should be and there's an energy leak. Yeah, and I think it, it is important to understand where your energy is flowing and where it's not. And it's probably something that we have, we have started to learn a lot better through our healing process because we have been, and I, I know I was in that mold of, if I'm not doing anything, I'm being lazy, I'm being unproductive. And it even, you like it took me time to actually accept that I need to rest and that even my rest is productive. <laughs> And uh, you know, like the, it was that that energy of the perpetual hustle. Like you've got to be doing something all the time. It's something that I grew up with. And so even in just in the healing process, it was like I can sit down now and I can I can watch something on TV and probably do that for a few hours and come back and have the solution that I was struggling to find for 10 hours or 10 days before. This is like allowing my mind to switch off to the thing because I'm putting myself under the pressure of finding the solution and allowing the pieces to fall into place as they will while I get on with something else. Even if that something else was what I used to term mindless activity. Because <laughs> for me, like, you know, I was never invested in watching programs and stuff like that. I just actually literally used it to switch off. And now it's like, actually, I want to watch this. And so I watch it. And when I'm done watching it, I like think I like automatically the problem has solved itself or the solution has presented itself. Let's not say the problem has solved itself. The solution has actually presented itself because it was there. I was just putting myself under the pressure of it must be done. And so I feel like a lot of it is also allowing ourselves to be more cognizant of when we need space and time. And that, that time when you're taking a walk is actually not product, unproductive time. You have to produce the space for yourself for things to flow. Absolutely. It's as they say, you can't give from an empty cup. So if your cup is empty, you're not really giving and you're taking from yourself, which leads to overworking yourself and burnout. And I also love uh, how God makes every single time be productive, even if you're resting. Because even in rest, what you're doing is integrating. So that's very productive. You can't just heal, 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 heal all day long and not integrate. That's not really healing. And you can't just rest all day and then do nothing every day for the rest of your life. That's not ideal either. You start feeling bad after a while. You need to do something. So it's good when there's a balance. And I also love how you mentioned watching movies and shows because I think god really can show you through the shows because a lot of times i've noticed when god guides me towards something it's because there's an energy of this thing that i'm moving through so it really helps with the healing and then grounding the healing
Yeah, just to kind of um, emphasize what you were saying, Christine, like it, it really is about the balance, right? And like you said before, it's about being present enough within to, to recognize when it's time for rest and to recognize, you know, when it's time um, to, to be productive, but even in both, on both sides, you're still being productive in rest. And, and when you're living your life purpose, um, being productive uh, gives you the energy that you would have otherwise gotten in resting, right? And so it's uh, really just like listening to God and, and uh, like you said, being present in that space and surrendering uh, to whatever he has next for you. Yeah, and I, and I think something that stood out for me from the sermon as well that I, th I think is probably good to bring in here is kind of that, that energy and that sense of what your foundation is versus what it was and how it has shifted. And like, I, you know, I look, I, 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 I look back and like it's something that Jose and Michaela shared, like, you know, that, that whole almost looks like it's imploding only to explode. And I was like, you know, the foundational work feels like it has been years in the making. Like, you know, it, and, and I, you know, sometimes I, I look at it and I go like, it was literally like lifting one brick at a time where I was in the space of like, we can excavate patches of land, it's okay but it's not compassionate to do the patches of land thing, especially not when you're building the foundation. And then sometimes, you know, you have this foundation and it goes, it go, you, you, you kind of unpack it and you just find the roots that go so deep into what was, what no longer serves you. Like you literally pulling out weeds for a long, long time. And it almost feels, it's almost what, it's almost what Jose and Michaela shared. It's like, it feels like you're perpetually working at the same thing. And then all of a sudden it just shifts. And it's not necessarily that it's a sudden shift. It's that it's been incremental shifts, but you've been so focused on the fact that you're working on the upset that you haven't been focused on the gains that you're making and they, they might be small and they might feel small, but at some point they become, it becomes to the point where you're like, goodness gracious, that was work. But you don't realize how much that work has shifted and how, like when I look back, I look at my foundation now versus even three to four years ago. And I'm like, there is so much that's different. Like sometimes it's almost unrecognizable from where I was. It's so funny because it's true. It's what I've been working on as well. Like feels like the same task every day. And I'm like, God, can we go to the fancy stuff? No, pick up that brick. <laughs> but it's okay because God knows the way to that desire. And it reminds me of this life purpose class. I don't remember which one it was, but Steph was talking about the desire to build, for example, a skyscraper. And then there was like, there's these bricks and then you need to lay the foundation and that's boring work. <laughs> and many people give up at this stage, I guess, because it is the boring work. You don't get to see the skyscraper within one day in front of you. But it does take a lot of work to do that because you need to build the appropriate foundation for all these buildings to stand on. And the same is true with your life purpose because it's also limitless. So you need to build a foundation that is eternal and that you can expand on and keep expanding on that without worrying that the foundation is going to cave in at some point. Yeah, I feel like that's like speaking directly to me because like right now, um, I'm working on my CPA exam uh, to, to get my license in, in accounting, right? And it is just, oh, it's, it's, it's not fun. It's not the fun work. Like it's not the skyscraper. 
but I have to do this part. I have to build this foundation in order to work towards my skyscraper and have my skyscraper, right? But um, yeah, I think this is just a really good reminder that, yeah, building the bricks, putting the bricks one by one, doing the work, chopping the wood, carrying water may not be the fanciest thing. It may not be the most fun thing, um, but it's necessary. And there, and when you partner with God, there are ways to make it enjoyable and ways to make it feel good, right? God would never have you do something um, that will drain you. There's always a way to make it feel loving and a way to make it feel full. And that's kind of what I'm uh, working on right now. So yeah, I think that was a, a really great point to raise. Starting to feel pretty complete with the discussion. All right, so I feel like this is a great place to wrap it up. Thank you for the amazing productive discussion and thank you to everybody else who joined us today. And we will see you next Sunday. Bye everyone.